Hello and welcome back to the channel fellow space nerds. As you might have noticed, I have taken quite an extended hiatus, both from EVE as well as uploading here on YouTube. But lately, my fingers have been itching again to shuffle through some old footage and showcase some questionable frigate fits to my dearest of capsuleers, which is of course all of you. The fit we'll be looking at today is a Kaidi artillery rifter. The fit is here displayed on the screen. Uh, first things to mention, of course, it's running a Warp Disruptor instead of a Warp Scrambler. The reason being for that is that we want to accompany the longer weapon range on the artillery, which is given, of course, by the weapon as, uh, as well as the whole bonus from the Rifter that gets a fall of bonus. Uh, the second priority here, or the two other priorities, are range and damage. Uh, reason being is super simple, you have long range so you have to make sure that you're fast enough to be able to have um, control of the engagement to be able to use this range to your advantage. What's helpful with that is a roll T2 web for slow percent and a roll T2AB for speed. As most other long range web kite fits, this rifter fit shines against, for example, T1 or Navy kiters, T1 or Navy brawlers, and even some single web scram kite fits. The RD range here really helps because most weapon systems can shoot as far as the rifter can. However, this fit significantly struggles against anything with two webs, especially if you're sliding on it. An example would be two web brawlers or rocket ships like the Kestrel if they are armor fit with two webs. So, without further ado, sit back, relax, and enjoy the clips. The first fight of today's video will be against a hookbill, and hookbills usually have dual web. So what you'll see me do in a second is here pull range at all costs to get out of the initial web range. Now what happens here, interestingly, is I don't get webbed at all since I actually drift out of the web range. I don't get a web, so what happens is I get a point, I start applying damage and I get TD'd. Which means the guy definitely only has one web or two webs and no uh, shield tank. In any way, I'm gonna try to stay out of his web range. Because if I'm out of web range and he can't get dual web on me, then I win the fight by default. I can keep him point. I can apply my damage to 20 kilometers. He can do neither of those things. Since I'm not pointed right now, he's probably scram fit. Since he has a hook bill, he applies his rage rockets to exactly 13 kilometers. And as long as I'm flying away from him, that range will actually be even less. Because while these missiles are flying, I'm already traveling away from him, making his rocket range effectively even lower. So uh, the win condition here is actually super simple. Stay outside of 13 kilometers, stay inside of your point range, and stay as close as possible. Uh, while still applying damage while not eating his rockets. As you can see right now, I drifted into his range and I'm getting demolished by his rockets. So it's really good this happened only just now because now I can finish him off with the last two shots. You can also see since he applied dual web right now, he's getting closer to me fast. So which means I have to finish him off right now or I'm dead. That's why you see me heating even though everything is completely up off of heated. Now I should get him, I think, oh no, one more shot even. And you can see it got really close here, so do not drift back into web range. Do not make that mistake, because as you can see, it almost got me killed. Yeah, GF to Reader Ghost, and let's go to the next clip. Alright, engagement number two. This one will also be against a uh, hook build. Surprise, surprise. However, this hook build is sitting at range, so my initial thought is immediately this guy will be Kaidi. So my initial thought here of course is get close, because if he's Kaidi then I want to stay close to make sure I can still apply my damage. His missiles will apply anywhere to 63 kilometers, so if I don't stay close I don't apply damage. So I get pointed here, the guy is Kaidi as expected. The good thing is however that I'm applying my damage pretty far. With fall of bonus my fusion applies to 28 kilometers. I'm still expecting this guy to be active armor, so I keep fusion loaded even though it's a, it's a Kaidi fit. And now the TD comes in, and this is really, really, really difficult, because that TD actually will be range at one point. I think right now, I, I didn't check when the pop-up came up, I think right now it was tracking, which is not bad of an issue, but after the first cycle it gets switched to um, range, and this is really a big issue for me, because if I can't stay close, then I die here. So what I do now is highest priority is getting closer. I start trying to intercept his course, he here slows down, which is a big, big, big issue. You can see he's actually at 600 MS, I'm pretty sure he turned off his micro after by accident, and that means I can manage to grab web here. It was only for one cycle, it does, doesn't seem like much, but uh, it allows me to line up the final shot and get the win. All right, let's get a little variety in here. Uh, fight number three is actually not against the hookbill, it will be ag instead against a navy magnate. Now, uh, when I shot this video, or when I captured this footage, the Navy Magnet was super new to the game. Nobody really knew how to fly it, how to fit it, and I was expecting a very blingy and very serious fight here. I kind of went in here expecting to die. 
So, uh, my plan is pull range, because it doesn't matter if pulls or beams, if I pull range, I can maybe outrange his multi-frequency and get him to reload to an ammo that deals less damage than full damage, which will be multi-frequency. My fusion applies to 28, so my plan is pull to 13, 14, where I apply full damage with fusion, but he has to switch to a lower damage uh, ammo. Yeah, as you can see, he's completely hammering me, so I was able to pull out of the 10 kilometer range, I'm now at 11, 12, and the damage starts to cool down. Initially, it was a lot, which was probably multi-frequency. I'm betting here on him not having medium range ammo, so he probably reloads to something like Aurora or something where he will not track me at all. And that's why you can also see me not moving in a directly straight line, I'm moving left and right to make sure I don't have a perfectly straight uh, line of movement, because then Aurora would still hit me really hard. Uh, if you're not aware, Aurora has really bad tracking, but good range and damage. Yeah, as you can see, I'm struggling a lot less than I thought. I'm heating here to make sure I get the final blow before he gets out of my point range. And yeah, one of the first Magnet navies to go down. So I was actually really proud of this one. All right. The last engagement of this clip starts a little different. I'm actually sliding together with the Breacher here onto a Mollus Navy. So we're basically setting up for a fun little threesome. However, things turn out differently than expected. So here, initially when we land, my plan actually was to fight the Breacher. The Mollus Navy sits at range and immediately bails. So this turns into a 1v1. Very nice, of course. And I'm expecting this to be a very easy fight. The Breacher is kind of tanky, kind of slow, and deals damage anywhere up to 9-10 kilometers. So it's the perfect engagement ship for me. Uh, all I have to do is pull range, sit at 12-13 to 13 kilometers, and use my superior speed, range, and damage to just out-control him and wither him down until he's dead. Theoretically, the only damage that should apply to me are his two drones, and I can easily tank those until he runs out of tank. Now you probably realize that I loaded phase plasma. Reason being is the Breacher will be both armor as well as shield active tanked. And they usually run EM rigs, so shooting EM is bad for the armor tank as well as the shield tank. So phase plasma is a nice mixture of thermal and kinetic damage to hit both um, types quite well. Now as you probably noticed, a uh, hookbill slid, and this is dangerous. I'm thinking this is loose friend, so I'm pulling range, I'm dropping damage on the breacher, and I'm immediately switching to the hookbill. Uh, there's three things that could happen here. The breacher changes with me, and we kill the hookbill. They both kill me, and I'm dead anyways. Or... Uh, option 3 is what, what exactly what happens, is the Breacher realizes he's not pointed by me anymore and immediately bails, which you can see right about now. So now I'm stuck in a 1v1 with a hook build. The problem is I'm already out of armor, I was fighting a Breacher before. Really, really important, as you probably mentioned, uh, saw in the beginning, the first thing I did when the hook build slid was pull range. And the reason being is the exact same thing I've said probably 10 times in this video. If you pull range, if you pull out of the rocket range, you're already halfway done with winning the fight. And as you can see, this guy is barely keeping me at 11 kilometers, so like half of his missiles are barely reaching me. And right now you can see I'm repairing and the missiles are not reaching me anymore because he was sitting at 11, but I was already out outrunning the missiles. Uh, right about here, he realizes that he will die. I turn back just to make sure that I can finalize the kill and get the nice, satisfying finishing blow on the hook bill. Yes, so if you stuck around this far, uh, I really want to thank you for watching. I appreciate that you uh, came back to this channel after all this time. If you're new around here and haven't seen me before, uh, I do videos about all kinds of funny, uh, usually solo frigate PvP fits, but also some other things like uh, funny clips from small gangs with friends or also just uh, montage kind of clips. So feel free to keep a like or a sub here if you're interested in more content like this. And if there's anything you want me to improve or change, I'm happy about some recommendations in the comments. Take it easy and see you back here soon.